<laughs> okay guys, so came out here to the pond. Still it's starting to unfreeze really good. But it's not quite unfrozen yet. You can see that end way down there has a little more ice off of it than this end does now. But it, it's getting there. It's probably only about an inch or two left of ice all over the lake. I just walked all the way around it here and it's pretty well unfrozen or at least starting to unfreeze around the edges really well. So I'll probably another couple days, definitely by next weekend I'll be out here fishing. Probably gonna come back out tomorrow and do some fishing. But for right now, I'm just gonna call it a day. Just wanted to come out and see what it looked like. It is getting there, it's starting to unfreeze. Like the far end down there, the deep end, it's still pretty well covered because all the ice is getting pushed down towards that end. It's actually smashing into the land. And that's the end I really want to be fishing because that's where all the fish are. It's the deepest end in the pond. The shallow end is getting pretty well unfrozen. So I'm gonna come out tomorrow and probably fish that shallow end out. See if I catch anything, I seriously doubt it. I did see a couple turtles running around. So that gives me hope that they're actually gonna be moving. But anyways, I'm just gonna do a fishing line review, I think, for today. Post at least one video and get going here. Put this camera to use because I did spend money on it and I need to get it going. So pretty much that's it for day out here. Getting really anxious to get out and go fishing. Let's take a couple shots around here. Look, there's a dead little perch right there. What the heck? That's crazy. I wanted to do a quick review on a couple lines I used last year and the lines I'm going to be using this year for fishing. Last year I used the suffix 832 advanced braid and it, I do not like this line at all. Last year I was using it on my bait casters and about mid cast on the bait casters it had backlash and it if you casted it too hard it would backlash so you couldn't get the distance you wanted you couldn't really use it all that well it's great for like flipping and pitching and stuff where you're not really casting very hard but I, I just didn't like it the other problem I have with it is the colors fade on it really quick and I also had it snap on me which is weird for a braid usually braid stands up pretty good and it wasn't like it was wore out or there's a fray in one spot it just snapped so I'm not a big fan of the suffix line anymore I won't be using that anymore it the reason I used it last year is because I used their lead core line for trolling and that stuff is phenomenal. It works great. The color does fade on it too, but as far as the line goes, it works pretty well. I haven't used anything else, so I can't really compare it to anything else. But the suffix braid, I have used other braids and I'm not a big fan of their straight braid line. So this year I'll be using the spider wire stealth braid. I already spooled up all my reels with this. Had pretty good luck with that last year. And as far as braid goes, that's pretty much it. I'm, 
I have personally used this. I had my dad actually use this last year and he had really good luck with it. Very little backlashing. Worked really good for him. So I switched over to it too. So I'm going to be using all the spider wire stealth braid on my reels this year, even my spinning reel. Now, that pretty much covers it for braid so far this year. I just have, I think that 65 for my heavy duty flipping pitching reel, and then I have 30 pound for all my other stuff, which 30 pound is about the lowest I'll go, not because of the strength of it, but because of the thickness of the line itself. I like a little bit thicker line on my bait casters so I can <clears throat> not get so many dig ins and stuff when I wrench down on it. And let's see, let's go over our floral carbons. So last year I didn't really use this on my bait caster so much. I used it for just rigging up and leaders and stuff like that, but it's the Sunline Super FC Sniper line. I was using it in I don't know what eight pound test and I was using that for just leaders and rigging up trolling stuff for that and it works really good the only thing I didn't like about it was it has really bad water what is it the water penetrates it really bad which makes it brittle and soft and it snaps really easy. That's the only problem I had with this. Other than that, it was a really good line. I did like it. I do recommend it. The other line I tried last year as well. Once again, I didn't use this as a full spool up on my any of my combos. But it's just a P line. I used this in 12 pound test. Once again, mostly just for making leaders on my braided rods and rails. It is a really good line. I did like it. I didn't test it nearly as much as the other braid or floral carbon that I used last year. But I do recommend it. It is a good line. There's one drawback to it, and I'll explain that in just a little bit here. Or right now, actually. What I'm using now is the Seeger, and the Seeger and the Sunline, the reason I like these two the most is because they have the smallest diameter out of all the floral carbons that I know of. There might be other ones out there that have the same thing, but as far as I know of, these two have the smallest diameter. So that's the reason I tend to go towards the Seeger and the floral or the Sunline floral carbons is because I like those because they have the smaller diameter so I can go up in poundage on the line but still have a smaller diameter which is great because that means I don't have to worry about breaking off when I get into a big fish or something like that. So I, I really enjoy that. And last year, I was using Seeger on my favorite bait caster rod and reel combo. And I thoroughly enjoyed this line. The only time it ever failed me is when I screwed it up because of me. When I got a backlash or something like that, and I pulled it out and pulled it out and pulled it out. And then they got all tangled up and knotted up. That's the only time it failed me. So, other than that, it was pretty much perfect. It, the water still penetrates it a little bit. It's not nearly as bad as the Sunline, I think. That's my personal opinion on it. And 
I may or may not try the Sunline. I, this year I was actually going to go with Sunline, then I found an awesome deal on this, on the Seeger spool, which is more line than I'll probably ever use. And this year I went with 20 pound test. Last year I was using 17. I kind of wish I would have went with the 15 pound test, but it's a little too late. I already bought it and already spooled up. So I do love the Seeger because one, it has the smallest diameter compared to the Sunline. It's not, I think the Sunline's actually a little bit smaller. But I, I still think the Sunline, or the Seeger line, is quite a bit better than the Sunline. Just because of the water penetration. I never had this fail me. I've never had it snap. It's very abrasion resistant. I caught quite a few pike without steel leaders on while I was bass fishing. And they almost did no damage to this line at all. And after every time I catch a pike on my line when I'm out fishing, I always check the line afterwards. I've had it to where the hook will go through, wrap around, fish and everything, check the whole line, don't feel anything. And that's why I like that line the most. They make an awesome line. The price is pretty expensive, but if you don't want to lose a fish, that's the line I'd go with. And they have different brands of the Seeger fluorocarbon. I haven't tried the other brands. I've always gone with the same Vizx line. This is the first time I've gone with 20 pound. I'm hoping that wasn't a mistake this year because I've already spooled up on all my rods and reels. So yeah, that, that's all I have to really say about that. It seems to work really well. The fish really don't see it that well. And let's go with now <clears throat> anytime I spool up with braid I always put a mono backing on it and I used mono for years so far my favorite is this Bass Pro Shops Turny Tough it works really good I have used this quite a bit this, this spool is actually almost empty. I mostly use this now for just backing my braid. This is in 12 pound. Most of the time I've always used 8 pound mono. I have had, I'm not a big fan of the Berkley, but as far as the Bass Pro stuff goes, I do like this stuff. It works really good, it has low memory. It works great for backing or leaders or if you're just a weekend warrior fisher. The mono is good stuff. It doesn't have quite the sensitivity as the floral carbon or the braid. And that's kind of why I went away from it during the whole bass fishing time I've done, which I've only been bass fishing for a year. But I always put uh, my reviews on how I feel something is. Most of these lines I've used for a year. And that gives me a pretty good aspect because your normal fishing season is going to be a year. So that's how I kind of rate these lines. As long as I've used them for a year, then I'll put up a review about it. So I don't just review stuff without using it. And then my favorite mono, which I never really used this, but my dad has. And he swears by it. I have actually tried this out a few times. I've never done a full spool of this, as far as I can remember. Except for when my dad spooled it up when I was a kid. But the stern line is phenomenal mono line. It has very low memory. It works well. Very abrasion resistant. 
last a long time. Works great. Once again, I pretty much use fluorocarbon braid from now on. So I don't really go towards the mono line anymore. But it is good line. I do recommend it. If you're going to go with mono, might as well go with stern. It's cheap. It works great. It it's just a phenomenal line. You might as well get it. This is in 12 pound. The reason it's in 12 pound is because once again I use it for mostly backing my braid so it doesn't spin on the spool. The other line that I did try out quite a bit is this High Viz Bass Pro Shops Carpy Max. And I guess, oh, no, it's just a Super Viz. Once again, this is from kind of my childhood era of fishing. It's an eight pound test. It, it has very low memory. Pretty good abrasion resistance. I've never really had it snap on me that I can remember of. Works great. And a lot of people will say, oh, this bright yellow high vis color the fish are going to see they're not going to want it so much but I've tested that not just in a year I've tested that probably like three years now ice fishing normal fishing the fish don't care about this color at all I'm pretty sure they can't even see it and it works great. I've caught just as many fish on this compared to the nice clear line. Even with the floral carbon, the fish don't see this color. And I love this color because when you're casting out there, you can see it and see where your hook drops, where your line is. It's great color. The only thing I don't really like about it is, is that they don't make it in anything heavier than, I believe, 10 pound. It might be 8 pound is the heaviest they go. The reason for that is because it's a carby line, which is great, but I don't fish for carpy all the time. I've caught in quite a few big bass on this. It's really strong line, even so it's rated to 8 pounds.